there is a glandular growth pattern which is very similar to the normal endometrial tissue okay now there are three important histological grades that you have to remember there is a grade 1 or well differentiated endometrial carcinoma grade 2 or moderately differentiated endometrial carcinoma and grade 3 or poorly differentiated endometrial carcinoma now this grading is uh, basically based on the amount of solid architecture or solid growth so grade 1 tumor they have less than 5% solid growth that means more than 95% of the tumor they are composed of entirely well formed glands okay whereas the grade 2 tumors okay they are having solid growth uh, up to 50% up to 50% of the tumor if it shows solid growth it becomes grade 2 or moderately differentiated so the well formed glands are mixed with the areas with the solid uh, sheets of cells okay so if the solid growth is less than equal to 50% it is grade 2 tumor and if the solid growth is more than 50% it is a poorly differentiated grade 3 tumor now this is the well differentiated it is a grade 1 endometrial adenoma carcinoma why we are calling it as grade 1 because all the tumor from this part to this part is composed of glands okay very very important can everyone appreciate the nature of these gland they are maze like they are maze like there is back to back gland formation is there so if you see this gland Uh, as well as this gland if you see this gland and this gland both of them are back to back they are present in back to back configuration with no no intervening stroma in between no intervening stroma in between okay that means that there is a stromal invasion by these glands is this very clear okay now this is the second variety this is the moderately differentiated endometrial carcinoma which is grade 2 now what is very important can you see that there are areas which is completely solid in nature there are areas which are completely solid there are certain areas where the glandular differentiation is maintained like this but relatively there are lots of areas if you see which is solid okay but it is less than 50% of the entire tumor okay so it becomes your grade 2 or moderately differentiated endometrial carcinoma which is having glandular architecture along with the solid areas okay this is the solid area this is the glandular area if you look at this third diagram this is a poorly differentiated endometrial carcinoma where majority predominantly the tumor if you see is having a solid growth pattern okay they are having a solid growth pattern and from the image we can say that more than 50% of the area if you will see is showing solid growth okay so there is a predominantly solid growth pattern which is the poorly differentiated or grade 3 endometrioid variety of adenocarcinoma today we are going to do the next competency that is the endometrial a uh, carcinoma and endometrial tumors along with the endometrial tumors we are also going to read about the myometrial tumors okay so let let us begin today's topic of discussion so we are going to begin first with the group uh, first with the classification of endometrial carcinoma so basically over here what is very important that we have to understand that basically the endometrial carcinoma it is the most common invasive cancer of the female genital tract and most commonly it is of two types okay there is a type 1 variety of endometrial carcinoma and there is a type 2 variety of endometrial carcinoma so uh, the who has uh, basically divided the Uh, the who has basically divided the endometrial carcinomas okay uh, accordingly so there is an endometrial adenocarcinoma which is endometrioid type that is it is it very much resembles like the normal endometrium so it is called as the endometrioid type and there is an endometrial adenocarcinoma which is the type 2 variety which is non endometrioid type it doesn't resemble like the normal endometrium okay so endometrial adenocarcinoma endometrioid type is there it can have a secretory ciliated squamous mucinous and squamous differentiation can be there okay whereas the non endometrioid type they are of three important histological type and the most important being serous carcinoma clear cell carcinoma carcinosarcoma okay so all these three comes under the type 2 whereas the type 1 endometrial carcinoma is the endometrioid type now the type 1 carcinoma can be grade 1 to 3 okay whereas 
the type 2 endometrial carcinoma by definition they are always grade 3 tumors okay and then there can be miscellaneous variety of endometrial carcinoma like the squamous cell carcinoma mixed carcinomas undifferentiated carcinomas and rare tumors like the tra transitional cell carcinoma so the most important classification is there are two main types one is the endometrioid or type 1 endometrial carcinoma and then we are having the non endometrioid or the type 2 endometrial carcinoma so uh, before we start with the individual types of endometrial carcinoma a very important update which is present in the 10th edition of robins and it's a potential question for your exam is your molecular subtyping of endometrioid as well as serous carcinoma uh, that is both type 1 and type 2 endometrial carcinomas they have a certain amount of molecular alteration okay that we are going to understand so number one we have ultra mutated or pole tumors hyper mutated or msi tumor msi means micro satellite instable tumors three is copy number low or micro satellite stable tumors copy number high or serous like tumor now over here whenever i am seeing the serous like tumor i am referring to the uh, serous ovarian adenocarcinoma feature okay always remember that so the ultra mutated or the pole tumors are those endometrial tumors which shows mutation in the dna polymerase e gene that is there is a gene called as the pole gene and this pole gene is basically uh, encoding the dna polymerase epsilon uh, enzyme okay so over here in this kind of tumor there is a mutation in the pole gene so there is a defect in the dna polymerase e and this kind of mutation produces a very high burden of somatic mutation so this is one molecular subtype of endometrial carcinoma the second is the hyper mutated or the micro satellite instable tumor this is characterized by mutation in or epigenetic silencing involving Involving very important the mismatch repair gene and such tumors are having again a very high burden of somatic mutation now can anyone tell me where is it that we have read about the mismatch repair genes yes where is it that we have read about the mismatch repair gene? yes when was the last time you have read about the mismatch repair gene Sutherland colorectal carcinoma. Very good. Which type of colorectal carcinoma? Sir, that MSI one. Very good. The MSI, the right-sided colorectal carcinomas, the MSI carcinomas, okay? That was the one that we have already read before. So if you remember, there was a syndrome in the familial variety that is the HNPCC, hereditary non-polyposis colon syndrome, colon carcinoma. And there was a syndrome that was called as the Lynch syndrome. Now, Lynch syndrome had an association not only with the colorectal carcinoma, that is HNPCC, but they also had a high risk of endometrial carcinomas. Okay. So, mismatch repair gene mutations are also seen in endometrial carcinomas. Then, the copy number high or copy number uh, the copy number low or the microstable tumor, that is a third variety, it is a common type. And it is associated with the endometrioid or type 1 morphology. Okay. It is associated with mutations which are increasing, uh, you know, the signaling via the PI3K AKT pathway, which you all remember is one of the growth and proliferative pathways that we know. And the copy number high or, or serous like tumors, these are aggressive tumors which are associated with type 2 morphology or the serous kind of morphology or the high grade type of morphology often associated with tp53 mutation this is the latest addition in the uh, uh, new robins and uh, a lot of questions are expected from this particular uh, molecular typing of endometrial carcinoma so as i told you clinical pathologically if we classify there are two broad categories of endometrial carcinoma the type 1 variety yes it is also called as the endometrioid variety Yes, and there is a type 2 variety, okay, which is non-endometrioid variety, okay, comprising the, the clear cell variety, serous variety, and the mixed mullerian, that is the carcinosarcoma variety. So, there are some points of difference between the type 1 and type 2 endometrial carcinoma. So, what are those points of difference? So, type 1 endometrial carcinoma is involving a younger age group, the difference between the type 1 and type 2 being 10 years, okay. 
So type one is at 55 to 65 years, whereas the type two endometrial carcinomas are 10 years older at 65 to 75 years. The basic clinical uh, setting in which the type one endometrial uh, and endometrial carcinoma develops is endometrial hyperplasia, where there is an unopposed estrogen stimulation, obesity, hypertension, diabetes mellitus. So it is occurring in a, in a setting of systemic disorders. Okay. Whereas uh, the type 2 endometrial carcinoma is developing in the background of endometrial atrophy. Over here, we were having hyperplasia. But over here, it is in the setting of atrophy and thin physique. Over here, the individuals are having a thin physique. They do not have systemic disorders. They are not obese. So morphologically, as I've already explained, the type 1, they are resembling the normal endometrial gland. So they are also called as endometrioid variety of endometrial carcinoma. Whereas the type 2 variety, they are non-endometrioid variety and they are basically uh, uh, having the serous clear cell mixed Mullerian variety. Now, this serous variety is very similar to the serous ovarian carcinoma, hence the term. The clear cell variety is also very much resembling the clear cell uh, carcinoma of the ovary. So hence the term. Okay. And the mixed Mullerian tumor also called as carcinosarcoma where both the epithelial elements as well as the mesenchymal elements are implicated. And by default, these tumors, that is the type 2 tumors are always more aggressive. And all of them are regarded as grade 3 tumors. Whereas the type 1 tumors, they are having 1 to 3 grade. Grade okay. 1 to 3 grade 1 to 3. I will discuss how you how we are going to grade this tumor. So the precursor lesion, as I told you, clinically, the type 1 tumors are under the setting of endometrial hyperplasia, whereas the setting, the precursor lesion of type uh, 2 uh, endometrial carcinoma, especially there is one defined for the serous variety. It is called as serous endometrial intraepithelial carcinoma, that is SEIC. Now, let me just explain you one important thing over here that I'm also going to explain you when I'm going to teach you ovarian carcinomas. What is that? Now, just like in case of in a subset of ovarian carcinomas, okay, there is a lesion called as serous tubal intraepithelial carcinoma, STIC. And that is also giving rise to one subset of high grade serous ovarian carcinoma. Okay. Similarly, in the endometrial carcinoma, there is a precursor lesion in case of type 2 endometrial ca ca carcinoma that is called as serous endometrial intraepithelial carcinoma. And the cells of SEIC are very similar to cells of stick. Okay. This is what I want to emphasize. Okay. And I'm going to discuss about this point in detail when I teach you the ovarian tumors as well. So the precursor lesion over here is serous endometrial intraepithelial carcinoma. Now, there is a group of genes which are mutated in case of type 1 and type 2 and the molecular pathogenesis is quite different. Now, what is very important, as I told you that there is a PI3K AKT pathway and the tumor suppressor gene that is the P10, it is negative regulator of that pathway. Yesterday, we had read about the, uh, I think day before yesterday, we had read about the endometriosis. So, P10, it is a negative regulator. So, the genes which are mutated in the type 1 endometrial carcinomas include P10 mutation, MLH1, that is the uh, microsatellite instability, KROS, MSI, then the ARID1, uh, uh, ARID1A, PIK3CA, CTNNB1, that is the beta catenin mutation and FGFR2. So these are the group of genes which are mutated, which I am going to, to elaborate with the help of diagram also. Whereas in the type 2 carcinomas, the TP53 mutation is far more common. Aneuploidy is also there. And there is involvement of FBXW7, CCNE1, and triple P2R1A or PP2A gene mutation, which is also involved in case of type 2 endometrial carcinoma. Now, the behavior of the type 1 endometrial carcinoma is quite indolent. They are quite slow growing. They have a much better prognosis. Okay. And they are spreading via the lymphatics, whereas the type 2 endometrial carcinoma is having a very aggressive behavior and they show intraperitoneal and lymphatic spread. So I hope you have got a basic idea and point of difference and the classification of endometrial carcinoma. That is, there are two types. Type 1 endometrial carcinoma with one set of features, type 2 endometrial carcinoma with another set of features. So with this background in our mind, we are going to begin the first type of endometrial carcinoma, that is your endometrioid variety of endometrial carcinoma, which is your type 1 endometrial carcinoma. So looking at the introduction part, so it is the most common variety of endometrial carcinoma. So out of 
both the varieties, the type one is the most common variety, accounting for 80 to 85% of the cases. And majority of the tumors, they are falling in the type one variety as we have seen. Now, most of the tumors that we see, they are quite well differentiated tumors. Okay. And they are called as endometrioid because they resemble the proliferative endometrial glands. They are arising in the setting of endometrial hyperplasia that we have already discussed, where there is a setting of unopposed estrogenic stimulation. And they have associations with systemic disorders like obesity, hypertension, and diabetes mellitus. Now, very important thing is that when you carry out hysterectomy, okay, so in hysterectomy spe specimen, if you remember in the previous lecture, I have discussed about endometrial hyperplasia. There are two types, typical and atypical type. And I told you that in um, majority of the biopsies showing atypical hyperplasia, when they are followed up with hysterectomy, then the hysterectomy specimen shows both atypical hyperplasia as well as carcinoma. And both of them are occurring together and there is a connection between the two that we are saying that it is developing in the setting of atypical hyperplasia. How are we saying? What is the basis? Because both of them are containing identical P10 mutation. And this sharing of mutation between the atypical hyperplasia and carcinoma and the sharing of the P10 between them, it is a proof that P10 mutation is occurring before the development of, of overt carcinoma. The P10 mutation is basically present in the atypical hyperplasia stage only. So it is an early mutation and it is also establishing a fact that atypical hyperplasia is a precursor of endometrioid variety of endometrial carcinoma. Is this point very clear? Okay. Now, most common mutation overall, if you see the most common, you know, most common mutation over uh, all the mutation, most commonly all the mutations that we have seen in the type one endometrial carcinoma is increasing the PI3K AKT pathway signaling, which is one of the growth pathways. What is the other growth pathway? MAP kinase signaling pathway is the other growth pathway. Okay. So this is the molecular pathogenesis, a very beautiful diagram given in our Robins. So as I told you, that the type 1 endometrial carcinoma is arising in the setting of hyperplasia. So if you see, this is the proliferative endometrium with the tubular glands. And if you see, the endometrial thickness is normal or it is hyperplastic thickness is there. So initially, there is a mutation involving the P10 tumor suppressor gene that is followed by the stage of non-atypical hyperplasia initially, wherein uh, there is an increase in the amount of glands relative to the stroma. And all of them uh, have the same morphology. Now, over here, if you see uh, uh, the non-atypical hyperplasia, okay, it also harbors MLH1 mutation and that is followed by mutation in the KROS and there is a microsatellite instability converting the non-atypical hyperplasia into a atypical hyperplasia, which is having a more complex morphology. We have already discussed the points of differentiation between atypical and non and the usual type of hyperplasia. Now, in the end, uh, uh, the atypical hyperplasia they undergo certain other mutations like the arid 1A, pic 3 ca mutation, CTNNB1 or beta catenin mutation and FGFR2 mutation, which is giving rise to your endometrioid variety of carcinoma that is your type 1. Okay. And first, initially, we will have grade 1. That, that, that is followed by grade 2, grade 3 tumors. Is this point crystal clear to everyone? The molecular pathogenesis? I'm just discussing these mutation with what frequency they are involving the type 1 endometrial carcinoma. So uh, among the mutation that we will see, the mutation in the P10 tumor suppressor gene is present in 30 to 80 percent of the type 1 endometrioid, uh, endometrial carcinoma, that is the endometrioid variety. Mutation in the pic 3 c that we had seen is present in 40% of endometrioid carcinoma. Now, this mutation in pic 3 ca it is not present in hyperplasia. Therefore, there is an important MCQ. It is postulated that this mutation in the pic 3 ca uh, is responsible and having an important role in the conversion to malignancy. So, they are responsible for malignant transformation. So mutation in the KROS, okay, which is also uh, causing increased PI3K AKT signaling pathway is seen in 25% of all the cases. Loss of fu uh, function mutation in arid 1A tumor suppressor gene is seen in one third of the cases. And mutation in this particular uh, gene, arid 1A, it is also present 
in ovarian endometrioid and clear cell carcinomas and these are also present in the endometriosis if you remember from the previous lecture where i have taught you so this particular gene mutation loss of function gene mutation and added 1a it is not, it is present in one third of the endometrioid variety of endometrial carcinomas and also it is present in ovarian endometrioid and clear cell uh, carcinomas of the ovaries which are nothing but the tumors which are arising from the endometriosis and that that is also present in the endometriotic lesions clear these are the four major classes of mutation the p10 pick 3 ca kros and arid 1a now other mutations other less important mutations are also uh, uh, important are also present which are responsible for genomic instability what is the meaning of genomic instability that they are going to cause a rapid acquisition of mutations the rate of mutations are going to increase at a very fast rate okay now over here there are defects in the dna mismatch repair genes which is seen in 20% of these sporadic tumors okay and the defects in the dna mismatch repair gene occurs via epigenetic silencing also called as hypermethylation hypermethylation and most commonly it is seen in endometrial carcinomas which are associated in women who have lynch syndrome or hnpcc so very important very very important okay defects in the dna mismatch repair genes are 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 seen in sporadic tumors plus they are also seen in the familial variety of tumors in which familial variety the ones which are associated with lynch syndrome that is hnpcc so such people will have not only endometrial carcinomas but will also have increased risk of colorectal carcinomas the second type of genomic instability increasing tumors are mutations disrupting the proof reading function of the dna polymerase epsilon that is the mutations in the pole gene that we have seen in less than 10% of the cases they are present and when present okay they contribute to the highest burden of somatic point mutation so which uh, mutation is responsible for highest burden of somatic point mutation the answer will be mutation in the pole gene which is basically encoding the dna polymerase epsilon enzyme 50% of the poorly differentiated tumors they have loss of function mutation involving the tp53 and always remember the tp53 mutation in case of type 1 endometrial carcinoma occurs as a late event it occurs very late in the process is this point very clear to everyone all the different types of mutations which are present so when you are asked about the molecular pathogenesis of endometrial carcinoma if it is not mentioned type 1 and 2 then you will have to write both about type 1 and type 2 if it is mentioned about type 1 or type 2 then respectively you have to mention the molecular pathogenesis coming to the morphology of type 1 endometrial carcinoma so grossly the type 1 endometrial carcinoma can present as two ways it can present as a localized polypoid mass or it can present as a diffusely infiltrative lesion involving the endometrial lining so if this is the endometrium they can either present as a polypoid mass or they might diffusely involve the endometrium like this okay now uh, they are going to spread by invading the myometrium so they spread by myometrial invasion that is followed by direct extension into nearby organs and tissues now regional lymph node metastasis is common and that is followed by distant metastatic spread so on microscopic examination as i am uh, uh, speaking about there is a glandular growth pattern which is very similar to the normal endometrial tissue okay now there are three important histological grades that you have to remember there is a grade 1 or well differentiated endometrial carcinoma grade 2 or moderately differentiated endometrial carcinoma and grade 3 or poorly differentiated endometrial carcinoma now this grading is basically based on the amount of solid architecture or solid growth so grade 1 tumor they have less than 5% solid growth that means more than 95% of the tumor they are composed of entirely well formed glands okay whereas the grade 2 tumors okay they are having solid growth uh, up to 50% up to 50% of the tumor if it shows solid growth it becomes grade 2 or moderately differentiated so the well formed glands are mixed with the areas with the solid uh, sheets of cells okay so if the solid growth is less than equal to 50% it is grade 2 tumor and if the solid growth is more than 50% it is a poorly differentiated grade 3 tumor is this very clear grade 1 2 and 3 what is the meaning of grade 1 2 and 
Now, around 20% of the endometrial carcinomas, they also show squamous differentiation. Okay, so most commonly, this squamous differentiation that we see, it is of benign nature. And very, very rarely or less commonly, this squamous tissue might be malignant. Okay, so remember, whenever you are doing the grading system, that is the grade one, two, and three, it is always done on the basis of the endometrial gland tissue. We never take into account the, we will never take into account the squamous tissue when we are grading the endometrial tumors. Okay, always remember this is very important. The current classification system is based on the glandular differentiation alone and they ignore the areas of a squamous differentiation. So the areas of squamous differentiation is not taken into consideration. Is it clear to everyone? Okay. Now we are going to differentiate between a uh, well differentiated endometrial adenocarcinoma versus the atypical endometrial hyperplasia. So in the previous lecture, we had seen what is typical hyperplasia, what is atypical hyperplasia. After that, we are having well differentiated endometrial adenocarcinoma. So what are the features of endometrial adenocarcinoma that is differentiating it from atypical endometrial hyperplasia? I'm going to explain you with the help of diagrams as well. Okay. So very importantly, the well-differentiated endometrioid adenocarcinomas, they show a confluent glandular or papillary growth pattern wherein there is a back-to-back -back arrangement without any stromal tissue in between. That signifies that there is a, a, a invasion of the stroma. There is a cribriform pattern. Cribriform means is this pattern. I will show you all the diagrams. Irregular maze-like pattern where the glands are like a maze on top of each other. That is the irregular maze-like pattern. You have a solid architecture and you have a lot of desmoplastic stroma with a very complex epithelial growth pattern. Okay. Where a very complex epithelial growth pattern. Now, also one important morphological feature is tumor, which is having a mutation in the pole gene or in the polymerase uh, uh, DNA polymerase enzyme mutation or de uh, defects in the DNA mismatch repair. They are frequently associated with a very large number of infiltrating T cells. So this can serve as an important MCQ. So let us begin with the important morphological feature. So as we can appreciate, this is a type 1 endometrial carcinoma, which is showing a fungating mass in the fundus of the uterus. If we can appreciate, there is a fungating mass which is growing okay, into the uterus, okay, grossly. And it is hemorrhagic in nature. Now, this is the well-differentiated. It is a grade 1 endometrial adenoma carcinoma. Why we are calling it as grade 1? Because all the tumor from this part to this part is composed of glands. Okay. Very, very important. Can everyone appreciate the nature of these glands? They are maze-like. They are maze-like. There is back-to-back -back gland formation is there. So if you see this gland uh, as well as this gland, if you see this gland and this gland, both of them are back-to-back. -back. They are present in back-to-back -back configuration with no no intervening stroma in between, no intervening stroma in between. Okay. That means that there is a stromal invasion by these glands. Is this very clear? Okay. Now this is the second variety. This is the moderately differentiated endometrial carcinoma, which is grade two. Now, what is very important? Can you see that there are areas which is completely solid in nature? There are areas which are completely solid. There are certain areas where the glandular differentiation is maintained like this, but relatively there are lots of areas, if you see, which is solid, okay? But it is less than 50% of the entire tumor, okay? So it becomes your grade two or moderately differentiated endometrial carcinoma, which is having glandular architecture along with the solid areas, okay? This is the solid area. This is the glandular area. If you look at this third diagram, this is a poorly differentiated endometrioid carcinoma where majority, predominantly the tumor, if you see, is having a solid growth pattern. Okay. They are having a solid growth pattern. And from the image, we can say that more than 50% of the area, if you will see, is showing solid growth. Okay. So there is a predominantly solid growth pattern, which is the poorly differentiated or grade three endometrioid variety of adenocarcinoma. Is this point very clear to everyone? Okay. Now we are going to start with the second important variety of uh, endometrial carcinoma, which is the type 2, also called as the serous endometrial carcinoma. This is far more simple as compared to the above. 
Okay, this is the type two endometrial carcinoma. So, looking at the introduction, it occurs in women which are ten years older as compared to those who are having endometrial variety of carcinoma. The age group being sixty five to seventy five years. It is usually occurring in the setting of endometrial atrophy, as we have already discussed. These are also called type two tumors, and they are poorly differentiated grade three tumors, accounting for fifteen percent of all the cases. And the serous endometrial carcinoma is very much. recapitulating the morphology and the features of ovarian serous carcinoma okay looking at the molecular pathogenesis one very important point of difference is that as we appreciate that the tp53 mutation was a late event in case of type 1 endometrial carcinoma whereas the tp53 mutation and aneuploidy is an early event in case of type 2 endometrial carcinoma now if you look over here can you appreciate the thickness okay so this is developing in an atrophic endothelium atrophic okay and the precursor lesion to the serous carcinoma is acic that is serous endometrial intraepithelial carcinoma and this is followed by mutation in the fbx w7 triple p2r1 a and ccne1 mutation in these genes ultimately is going to lead to a invasion causing serous carcinoma which is very much similar to ovarian carcinoma now very very important thing this tumor that you see it is a superficial spreading variety of tumor okay it is very superficial and it tends to exfoliate and therefore there is a very high chance of this tumor spreading into the peritoneal cavity so at a very uh, you know at the initial stage of presentation only the tumor has metastasized quite widely both locally and systemically now as i uh, will just complete this uh, the molecular pathogenesis the tp53 mutation is present in more than 90% of the type 2 endometrial carcinoma and most commonly they have the missense mutation the tp53 mutation is also present in the normal atypical hyperplasia or in the type 1 tumors in the type 1 tumors but what was the differentiating point the differentiating point is uh, over here the mutation was a late event was a late event the tp53 mutation but in case of type 2 tumors it was an early event it was an early event in the type 2 tumors the tumor is arising as a surface epithelial neoplasm as i told you adjacent glandular structure it was going to invade the nearby gland structure and ultimately it is going to invade the endometrial stroma as well generally if you compare with the type 2 type 1 tumors they are having a poor prognosis and very important they tend to exfoliate they tend to exfoliate and they travel through the fallopian tube and they implant on the peritoneal surfaces okay so at the time of diagnosis already the tumor has spread outside the uterus so that is why this has a very bad prognosis these tumors they tend to exfoliate and they spread through the endometrial cavity via the fallopian tube it can enter the peritoneal and cause widespread metastasis at the time of diagnosis looking at the morphology of this kind of tumor it is arising in the setting of very small atrophic uterus okay and these are large bulky tumors or uh, you know sometimes they might be deeply invasive into the myometrium or sometimes they might grow into the endometrial cavity and as i told you the precursor lesion for the same is seic it is an in situ carcinoma okay and it converts and gives rise to serous carcinoma now very important why we are calling it as an in situ because uh, uh, this sic all the cells of sic they are having malignant phenotype but they are confined to the epithelial surface okay they do not breach the basement membrane okay now always remember it is also regarded it is regarded as a precursor but they say that it is most commonly accompanying the invasive serous carcinoma rather than preceding it so it is saying that it occurs along with serous carcinoma rather than occurring before that it is a postulation again now these tumor cells they are very high grade nuclear atypia is there okay and they show exfoliative or hobnail cytomorphology i am going to show the microscopic examination and there is an aberrant p53 staining so there is an increased amount of p53 staining that you are going to see in such lesions so microscopically just like the ovarian carcinoma serous ovarian carcinoma they also show papillary growth pattern so they will have papilla 
and they have a, an excessive amount of cytological atp with a high nc ratio and they have increased atypical mitotic figures with hyperchromatia and prominent nucleoli so with such cytological atp they are always regarded as grade 3 irrespective of the architectural pattern they are regarded as grade 3 tumors okay so this is the morphological diagram for the same as we can appreciate this is the endometrial intraepithelial carcinoma that is seic so it is a surface uh, growing tumor if you see the tumor cells are growing as a surface and some of them has also exfoliated if you see and they are limited so this is the tumor cell growth they are growing in the form of papillae okay but one important thing is it has been confined okay it has not yet invaded it has not yet invaded the stroma these are the endometrial glands the normal endometrial glands that we see over here and it is growing as as a surface epithelial tumor okay so there is no obvious stromal invasion this is the precursor lesion now this precursor lesion that we see this is marked by the aberrant p53 staining so all this area that you can see that there is a nuclear staining of the p53 that you can appreciate all these things if you will see these are nothing but these are the acic lesion serous endometrial intraepithelial carcinoma lesions okay these are the glands which are involved okay these are the glands or areas which have been involved whereas these are the normal looking glands okay these are the normal looking glands again this is one gland which is basically uh, involved by strong diffuse p53 staining so this is the uh, gland showing acic that is serous endometrial intraepithelial carcinoma whereas it is also showing accompanying normal endometrial glands normal endometrial glands they are not uh, showing absent p53 stain is this very clear to everyone yes so this is the acic lesion which has involved the superficial endometrial glands and the luminal surface of the uterine cavity so the uterine lining the endometrial lining cavity as well as the superficial endometrial glands have been involved by acic but the stroma is not yet involved so we are not calling it as a serous carcinoma and over here we have seen the p53 strong and diffuse p53 staining now look over here look at this diagram what is this architecture called as what is this architecture called as yes papillary in very outer. very 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 <laughs> this is your classical papillary architecture there is a papillary this is a papillary okay and the cells and the lining cells of the papillary are exactly same as the cells of scic so what is the difference between the two that over here we are seeing a stromal invasion okay so this is a papilla with well defined fibrovascular cores covered by the neoplastic cells this is also a papillary lesions but over here the papilla are very small so these are micro papillary lesion exactly the same thing is also seen in case of serous ovarian carcinoma this papillary architecture is seen over there as well so this is your case of serous endometrial serous endometrial carcinoma and this is having a much worse prognosis as compared to the type 1 endometrial carcinoma okay this is the other image as we are going to see the, again we are seeing the micropapillary architecture wherein you can see small slit like glands over here okay and if you see very very important look at these cells what is the classical feature what all points did i say they have a high nc ratio yes there is a nuclear pleomorphism classically there is hyperchromatia and there is they are having a prominent nucleoli prominent nucleoli and they are having highly pleomorphic see the size of this cell see the size of this cell they have lots of mitotic figures one of them present over here all the dark structures they are the mitotic figures that is present okay this is also one mitotic figure that is present over here so they have a very high mitotic figures as we can see in this diagram and individual tumor cells are highly pleomorphic with a high nc ratio round morphology hyperchromatic nucleus and prominent vesicular nucleus with prominent nucleoli the characteristic feature of serous carcinoma is this very clear the papillary architecture micropapillary architecture along with the individual tumor cell morphology okay the clinical features of serous carcinoma it is uncommon in women who are younger than 40 years of age so it is seen in older age peak it is seen in post menopausal women in the age group 55 to 65 years now individuals who are having the serous variety of carcinoma they must always be screened for dna mismatch repair defect 
Okay, why? Because around three to five percent of women with the serious variety of endometrial carcinoma, they are a part of Lynch syndrome, and they also have a high risk of colon carcinoma, which I have already discussed before. The prognosis of all types of endometrial carcinoma. Okay, the prognosis of all types of endometrial carcinoma. It depends on the stage of the tumor. It depends on the stage of the tumor. So this staging becomes very important from your exam point of view because this is an easy staging and you can remember. The stage one tumor is that which is come which is confined to the uterus. Okay, the body of the uterus, the corpus uteri itself. The stage two tumor is that which involves the corpus and along with that it involves the cervix. Then it becomes stage two. Stage three tumor it extends outside the uterus but not outside the true pelvis. Whereas the stage four tumor, it extends outside the true pelvis or involves the mucosa of the bladder of the rectum. That is the stage four tumor. Now surgery alone or irradiation is going to give ninety percent of five year survival. So at the stage one, so if the tumor is diagnosed at the stage one, grade one or two disease, that is the stage one, uh, stage one, but grade one or two disease have a ninety percent five year survival. Whereas the survival rate drops to seventy-five percent for stage one, but grade three tumor, and becomes fifty percent or less for stage two and three. So the most important prognostic factor for survival is your staging of the tumor. Now the five-year survival for serous carcinoma it is only eighteen to twenty-seven percent. It is very very bad. Is this very clear to everyone? so with this we have completed the type 1 and type 2 endometrial but in case of type 2 we have just completed the serous variety of carcinoma looking at another type 2 endometrial carcinoma very important exam question is your carcinosarcoma now over here you are having two element it's a mixed tumor we also call it as a mixed mullerian tumor it is a malignant mixed mullerian tumor now it is having both an epithelial component and a mesenchymal component so epithelial component is a poorly differentiated either endometrioid or serous carcinoma so either you can have a type 1 or type 2 morphology along with that you have a stromal you have a mesenchymal tumor wherein uh, you can have a stromal sarcoma you can have a leiomyosarcoma you can have heterologous elements like rhabdomyosarcoma element chondrosarcoma elements so you can have a cartilaginous part you can have a muscle part so re remember this is called as having a heterologous differentiation and that heterologous differentiation is associated with a worse prognosis Now remember this epithelial and the mesenchymal tumors. The, these both the components they are derived. It is hypothesized that the source of both this epithelial and the mesenchymal uh, you know uh, tumor, the source of both is a single cancer cell. Okay, a single founding cancer cell is giving rise to both the epithelial and mesenchymal tumor. Now very important if such a tumor metastasizes, they will only show epithelial component. That is only the epithelial component metastasizes. it is affecting the post menopausal women only and presents with bleeding and the five year survival rate is bad around 25 to 30% only so let us look at uh, look over here so over here what is very important as you can see this glandular structure yes so this is forming the epithelial component of carcinosarcoma or the mixed epithelial tumor mixed uh, mullerian tumor and this portion it is your stroma which is also showing atpr this is the sarcomatous stromal component now this is a this is a um, diagram showing metastasis so in the metastasis in case of this is a lymph node metastasis you can only see epithelial component metastasis over here you cannot see any stromal component metastasis in this tumor okay only the epithelial component metastasizes okay this is another diagram if you can see there are two patterns of carcinosarcoma which uh, with a subtle amount of blending so if you can see this is the epithelial pattern and this is the stroma in between okay there are two patterns okay and there is a blending see the epithelial component is blending with your stromal component over here but sometimes but sometimes they might appear as a completely separate mass on the left side you have a completely separate epithelial component on the right hand side you have a complete mesenchymal component and such tumors where both these uh, uh, you know entities are separate they are also called as a collagen tumor where the two different tumor parts are present in the same but they are separate tumor okay they are collagen tumor they might either blend with each other as shown over here or they might either be separate as a collagen tumor is this very clear all the points with regards to the carcinosarcoma or mixed mullerian tumor Okay. so collision yes. tumor not understood can you repeat see 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 i am just telling you this uh, mixed tumor that we can that we are looking at they can either show blending 
as we can see in this diagram that both the epithelial and the mesenchymal component they are blending with each other or they might be completely separate entities okay this is one separate entity this is another separate entity so they are you know as if they are colliding with each other okay so they are called as collision tumor is this very clear now yes sir okay now other tumors of the endometrium is uh, your adenosarcoma what is an adenosarcoma adenosarcoma you have to just understand the meaning of this tumor don't have to go into the details it is a malignant appearing stroma when the stroma when the stroma of the endometrium is malignant okay along with that you have benign but abnormal shaped endometrial gland so if you have benign endometrial glands in a background of malignant stroma it is called as adenosarcoma occurring in 4 to 5 decade a low grade malignancy one fourth cases can show recurrence and always confined to the pelvis so what is very important over here you are going to see that the stroma the stroma is malignant but the glands if you see the glands are benign the only thing with regards to the gland is that that they are abnormal size and shape so if you can appreciate the stroma the stroma is highly pleomorphic and malignant so malignant stroma is there and you can see benign glands okay but abnormally shaped that is called as adenosarcoma now uh, lastly the last heading till now we have seen the epithelial tumors and the mixed tumors of the endometrium now we are going to see the endometrial stromal tumors the type 1 and the type 2 tumors that we had seen they were basically involving the endometrial glands now what we are going to see are the stromal tumor very very important exam question lots of questions from aims it comes from this endometrial stromal tumor now this stromal tumor can either be your benign stromal nodules or they have endometrial stromal sarcoma so there are two things so under the benign heading we can have benign stromal nodules and in case of uh, your uh, malignant tumors we have endometrial stromal sarcoma now endometrial stromal sarcoma they can either be of low grade or high grade so low grade tumor they show certain fusion protein that is jas f1 suz12 this is a fusion protein which is seen and the five year survival of this tumor is around 50% for the low grade tumors whereas the high grade tumors they show an atypical round cell morphology with translocation 1017 and they show an important fusion protein that is ywhae fam 22 fusion protein is seen and the five year survival over here is less than 50% now 50% of all these endo uh, of all these endo uh, endometrial stromal tumors they show relapse okay the relapse the rate of relapse is between 36 to 38 uh, 36 to 80% for grade 1 tumors it is 36% relapse and for grade 3 or 4 tumors there is a 80% risk of relapse so the average is around 50% so this is your classical uh, 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 stromal nodule as we can appreciate this endometrial stromal sarcoma as we will see they are sharply demarcated from the myometrial surface this endometrial stromal tumor okay sharply demarcated one important feature over here is and uh, this another tumor if you will see uh, uh, sometimes the low grade endometrial stromal sarcomas they display irregular tongues like this you know like a geographical tongue irregular tongues of neoplastic uh, a uh, uh, stroma invading the myometrium so this is the stromal tissue and this is the myometrium so you can see this in a low grade endometrial stromal sarcoma how it is invading okay so this is all about your endometrial stromal tumors okay just remember there are two grades low grade high grade and you have to remember which what fusion protein is associated with each okay